Hello everyone, this is Mike from Dimensional Walking and today I am going to talk a little bit about my friend Barry. I promise you this, uh, I did a, a video that I talked about him uh, called Missing Time and so today we're going to do a little something different with Barry. Uh, you know Barry again was one of my warehouse managers in Atlanta, Georgia and we also had a friend, a common friend and his name was Tom. And so um, I was, uh, we were all privileged, uh, Tom and I were privileged to go to Barry's property in North Carolina. In fact, it was just five miles west of Grandfather Mountain. And it was an absolutely gorgeous area. Uh, Barry uh, had plans of putting a, a house or a cabin or something on it to retire someday on, on the property. But at this time when he went up there, there was no structure. So we camped. So that was, that was still cool. It was beautiful. Uh, um, there was these huge um, magnolia trees or bushes, I guess they're probably called. I don't know if they're trees or bushes. But anyways, they were absolutely gorgeous and they were all over his property. So anyway, so we went, we camped. Uh, and this was kind of a rolling hills. Again, it was only five miles from Grandfather Mountain. So it was kind of up there in the middle of the Appalachian Mountains. And so Tom... Tom, our friend, our mutual friend, he was basically a non-believer in UFOs and alien abductions, all this stuff. Uh, where myself, as you probably know by now, I'm I'm deep in the into the weeds with it, and uh, Barry was also because he had a ton of experiences uh, in his past, being in the military and uh, just just tons of stuff. Uh, and you can probably go and see a few videos where I mention him, and and one that was very recent. Uh, so anyway, so uh, I had brought along my trusty, I call it my trusty million watt uh, beam in which I use uh, to, uh, you know, spotlight or bring down uh, or communicate with uh, UFOs. And I've done this over the years. Okay. So anyways, I brought it along. Uh, so Tom, Tom thought it was funny. Uh, Tom, the non-believer, thought it was funny that I brought it along. And, and so Barry and I basically laughed at him. He laughed at us, and I laughed, we laughed at him. Uh, so anyways, so it was night, and we started, I started blinking and, and uh, blinked up into the clear. It was crystal clear, and it was crisp night in the Blue Ridge Mountain area of North Carolina. And... Um, Tom, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Barry suddenly pointed out a light that was moving rapidly from the south. And of course, Tom, you know, he said nervously, uh, oh, that's just a plane, you know, no big deal. So, but anyways, what happened was it was no big deal. It was a big deal, actually, uh, because the plane that he thought was a plane stopped suddenly uh, dead in his tracks and basically started hovering right there. And then it did all kinds of strange moves and maneuvers, etc. And then I started blinking. I was using the protocols that I had learned from uh, the Stephen Greer group uh, of blinking and you know all the other stuff that that goes along with it. And pretty soon they started blinking back to us. Um, same repeated whatever I repeated, it would repeat back. And you know, this went on for, golly, I, I guess it was probably, oh, I guess with that particular ship, it was probably about 20 minutes. And then it, it just shot straight up and it was gone. Um, and then there was other ones. Uh, there was other ones that came. Sometimes there was two of them together, three of them together. And that lasted, you know, I think we started probably about 9 or 10 o'clock. And that lasted till 1 o'clock. And we were pretty much exhausted. Um and so, so anyways, uh, after doing that, you know, we went, we went to bed, um, and all three of us had some really strange, amazing dreams. Uh, some, some of the dreams we were in each other's dreams, uh, some were about UFOs. Um, you know, we, we, we couldn't have no confirmation. We really felt that we, you know, I felt anyways, uh, and Barry probably had the same feelings that we probably were abducted. Um, but you know, I didn't, we really didn't want to tell Tom that cause he was already starting to freak out quite a bit, uh, about this whole situation with the, the lights in the sky and the blinking and all the other stuff. 
So anyway, so that's that was pretty much that. Uh, it was pretty incredible. Tom, Tom, who is the non-believer at the time, uh, still talks, had still talked about it years later as his baptism into the crazy world of the unknown. And that this was about, I guess now it's probably been about 35 years ago. So another Barry story. This is, this is, this one's pretty interesting. Uh, so Barry, uh, this story takes place uh, basically in Roswell, New Mexico. Okay, and as we all know, that's kind of a, a little bit of a holy grail of UFO. Uh, I, I won't call it folklore, but a lot of people probably still think it's folklore, but it's just probably a reality here. So anyways, uh, Barry had two very close friends, and his friends were quite a bit older than he was. Uh, he had met them in the military. Uh, Barry was in the Air Force. So uh, he met him in the, in the military, and they were, like I say, they were older than he was. So one of the guys' names was um, uh, Bill, and Bill was an aerodynamics uh, expert, and I don't remember the company. It was one of the aerospace companies out in California. And so, and all this, again, took place in 1947, in July of 1947. Okay, so he got a call from uh, one of his bosses at this company and said, Bill, you need to get ready. We're going to have a plane pick you up and you're going to be taken somewhere and plan on taking enough things to hang out for at least a week, if not more. And he, he occasionally had kind of similar clandestine type strange trips, but this one sounded even, some reason he felt this was really something bizarre or something there was a feeling he said in the conversation that he told he told Barry he didn't tell me he told Barry and Barry's telling me this story of course and then then there was another friend of uh of Barry's his name was um Ray and Ray was a forensic uh, uh forensic air, a specialist and his specialty was uh he was in the military he um he was in an Air Force, I think there was a combination, and I don't remember the name of the base, but it was up in Colorado. And actually, it was actually an Army base. I guess the Army, the Air Force maybe um, at that time in 1947, I'm not even too sure if the Air Force uh, officially was a separate branch. I think the, the Army may have had, took care of the planes too. I, I don't remember that whole little story, how that worked out. But anyways, this base was a, we'll call it an army slash air force base in Colorado. And so anyways, uh, he was sent, of course, he was also sent to a little small town in New Mexico. He, he was, I remember he was sent on a bus because it was a long ride. Uh, the other guy was able to fly in there, but this was a long ride. I remember uh, Barry telling me how long and, and tedious it was in one of those, uh, you know, camouflage army buses that he took. So anyways, when he got there, when, when Bill got there, he, uh, he, he saw these, uh, this strange metal. They showed him this metal, and he was, he was an aerospace, this guy was a, well, an aerospace expert or aero, aerodynamics expert. And we're going back to the first guy, that was Bill. So he, he would look at it, he said he touched the metal, uh, and it would had some amazing properties. He said it bent strange, um, you know. And I'm sure you've heard some of these similar stories, but I don't think you ever heard it from maybe somebody that was actually there. And he said it just did some really weird stuff. It had weird um, writing on it. Um, he he said something like hieroglyphics. I guess is the way he said it. He said he'd never seen anything like it, but that's what he reminded him. And so anyways, he observed all that, and I think he was there for several days. And then he, he tried to look whatever pieces they, they still had left of the ship. He wa was also looking for any aerodynamic type properties that he could possibly take back to the company um, that the military apparently invited uh, them to come and look at. So anyway, so, so he went back to California. I I think he, he worked at, uh, I think uh, Barry also said he worked at probably where Skunk Works is right now. And I don't remember which company had that. 
Uh, I think uh, Lockheed Martin eventually took over Skunk Works at one point, but I'm not sure, way back in 1947. So anyways, um, so that was that. So the other guy was named Ray. He, and, and let, me, let me tell you this, both of these gentlemen I'm talking about, uh, both Ray and Bill, they told Barry these stories on their deathbed. One of them, uh, I'm not sure what, uh, what Bill, uh, Bill died of, but Ray died two years after Bill of cancer. And both of them told uh, Barry this story on their deathbed. Um, because what happened with Ray was he went to the same place. Uh, they didn't, I don't, Bill and Ray didn't know each other, by the way, just so you know. It was, it was Barry that had those two, two people, two friends. Um, anyway, so Ray went there. He was taken to the southern field of this air base in Roswell, New Mexico. And he, and this hangar, the South Hangar, I think it was called, um, he witnessed, he saw on the ground, they showed him four small bodies burnt. They were badly burned. And that's why he came, because that's his expertise. And he examined them. And uh, he easily, and what, what the reason he was examining them was he had to determine were these humanoid or humans or there was something other than. And in fact, I think they told him, all we want to know from you is, were they humans? And if you say no, that's pretty much you're, you're done. That's all we need you to do. Because obviously, I don't think he's ever seen aliens before. But he said they were about three to four feet, about four feet-ish. He said close to four feet. One was a little taller, the other three about the same, he said. And they were all burnt very badly. But he said that there was no doubt in his mind they were not, um, they were not human. They were non-humans. So anyways, uh, so th that was pretty much it. So those are two deathbed, uh, I don't want to say confessions because they weren't confessions, but it was just passing some information off to my friend Barry uh, my coworker Barry, and he passed him off. He told me about it because he felt I would love to hear this, and I did. I did. It was pretty good, and I trusted Barry. I had worked with him for several, many years, and he was in, in a, we worked in a working environment. We worked in a fun environment, um, you know, etc. So anyways, I had not talked to, by the way, I have not talked to Barry in probably about 20 years, but I'm sure he's still having his amazing experiences Probably more every day, I don't doubt it, because um, I think somebody in those ships likes him a lot. And he, he was. And, and honestly, Barry, to me, when I first met him, before I even told him I was interested in UFOs and aliens, when I first saw him, I have to tell you, he looked like an alien. He really did. He gave off an alien vibe. Uh, he really did. Um, so, I you know, I don't really know what the deal was, but... Uh, he was a good guy. He was a very good guy, and I, I'll never forget him. Anyways, that's it for now. I almost knocked my papers off. That's it for now. And always remember, life is short. Memories are long. And as Roy Rogers said, happy trails until we meet again. So if you like us, please like us. If you would like to share some stories, you can either do it here at the comments or you can send in a private email to us at dimensionalwalking at gmail.com. And that's it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.